Well, Smiley, mate, we've pulled in an absolute legend for the game for a quick chat. Three-time major winner, six Ryder Cups, former European captain. How you doing, Padraig Harrington? What is going on, mate? Yeah, it's all good with me. I'm actually, uh, I've got a couple of weeks off and I'm getting quite excited about the Ryder Cup. Oh, 100%. Ryder Cup week is something special. You've been there six times. What are the feelings like going into a Ryder Cup week? A lot of stress. I think, uh, you know, as a player and I look back, obviously everybody carries a different type. I, I would have been a stressful enough individual and, and the intensity required during the Ryder Cup week, uh, you know, in many ways I'd burn myself out uh, a lot of Ryder Cup weeks. So I think once I became a vice captain, captain, you get to sit there and see a lot of this and you, you understand you, you, your job is to try and dissipate that, to try and give make the players as comfortable within themselves as you can during the week. And a lot of that is, is actually just giving them more information. You know, I can remember going back to my first Ryder Cups, you were guessing if you were going to play, you were guessing who you would play with. You know, it was like a secret. Now it's kind of full circle. You know, with pod systems, you, you, you're pretty much guaranteed you're going to play with three players during the week. You're going to be told in advance whether you're likely to play foursomes or four ball. And that will only change if, I don't know, can I say shit hits the fan? It will only change if things go wrong. Uh, you know, and, and, and of course they do, they do, some things do evolve. But I think the biggest key that has changed in the Ryder Cup over the years is players. And, and this is probably what, what would have gotten Tiger's head a lot early on in his career. Tiger likes a lot of control. You know, he gets those, you know, six o'clock, six a.m. Uh, practice rounds. He's off the golf course by nine. You know, he's in the gym. He's doing this. At the Ryder Cup, you know, he has to play a practice round for six hours, you know, on a Tuesday from 10 o'clock to four o'clock. You you always feel stressed. You always feel rushed. Nowadays, the teams are turning up in advance, getting a practice round in. So those practice rounds on, on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, they're nowhere near as important as they used to be. Players are told well in advance what they're doing, who, who they're likely to play with. So players are much more comfortable with where they're at, much more comfortable. Question on just as a captain, how much did you go back and forth on pairings? Because I know that like two years in advance, you're starting to already think about who pairs up with who. But as it, as you lead up, let's say these guys that are captains this week, Zach Johnson and Luke Donald, how much in their head right now are they questioning? Do they have the right format and for the right guys? You know, is that something that, that you were super confident about going into the Ryder Cup? I, I, I definitely think you're you, 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 you're pretty confident about what you're doing, especially the first day uh, for foursomes and four ball. You, you want to get everybody out. You want to see how comfortable everybody is. So, so you could have supposedly a weaker player in the team, and if he if he shows form the first day, you know he's likely to play twice the second day. So this is how things can change. The second day is definitely more fluid, and and, and certainly Saturday afternoon is very fluid. Because you, you're looking to put out your strongest possible team Saturday afternoon, get as many points. But the first three sessions or the first two sessions, you're you're building some momentum. You're 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 feeling out how players are are, are taken to it, how comfortable they are. Uh, so, th th but you are very clear about your options. So I, I think you know you know exactly who wants to play with who, who who can play with who, who's suited to play with who. And then within those boundaries, you're looking for the players that have hit the ground running, that are feeling comfortable, that are playing well. Uh, and, and probably the only doubt you would have, you know, when you get later on into that, that, you know, maybe that Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, you know, do you play a player who's playing well, who's lost? Or do you play, or play a player who's not playing as well, but has won? You know, these these are the questions that, you know, that a captain and a vice captain has to make. You know, this is why a computer or AI is not running the show. You have to take a thing. Do you prefer a player who's just hard and wins a match no matter what? Or do you play, 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 play a player who's in great form and, you know, got unlucky? You know, that's, that is the age old question for me that I don't think can ever be answered properly. You know, like there's been plenty of players that would go three, four matches and they got, they got unlucky. Well, you know, they lost. Whereas there's other players who got lucky or found a way. And, you know, that's probably the hardest part about being a captain is trying to decide 
which side do you go on? Because as I said, it, the stats kind of show over the years that strangely enough, when a player plays badly in a session, they actually play well in the next session. Uh, uh, but it, but again, that that takes a lot of a lot of trust. Gumption to, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it takes a lot of gumption to pick a player. But oh, you didn't play well. You're going out again. Uh, but you know, I think ultimately, you know, you like players who are winners. You know, players who will get the job done somehow, and that's that's kind of what you have to edge yourself towards. Uh, there's no point in being pretty and losing. In terms, of you captained obviously Europe in America. How important is the home advantage going into Ryder Cups? Yeah, I, I do question that that arrogance of mine taking the captaincy in America. <laughs> it just seems really difficult to uh, to win a away match. Uh, it, it you know, like even even now there was a little bit of talk. You know, I could have made this Ryder Cup team, and you know, when it was all said and done, obviously I, I, I wasn't close in the end. But it was all said and done in my head. You know, oh, you know. Maybe I'll make the next one. And then I was thinking, who wants to be in Bethpage Black for the next Ryder Cup? Who would want that captaincy away from home? Like, you, you know, you're, you're like, it, 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 it will be. And, you know, the thing is, Smiley, which is interesting, you know, you know, the Europeans will always say, well, we get a really tough time when we go to the US. It's, it's not very comfortable. And, and, and a lot of times, you know, it crosses the line. There's no doubt to our families, not so much to the players, little bit to the players, but to the families, you know, they, they haven't really signed up for it. So, you know, uh, somebody making a, you know, a, a joke, I'm not saying people are malicious in any way, but, you know, they're drunk and make a joke. It doesn't come across very well at times and it's hard. And if the families then bring it to the players, it starts getting in there. But, you know, the US players say they feel the same way when they come to Europe. So, it, it, you know, we're, you know, both sides aren't perfect, uh, certainly in the eyes of the players anyway. Uh, so yeah, it's it's there is home advantage. There's home advantage in the setup. There's home advantage in the crowds. Uh, you know, eventually, you know, in fifty years' time, you know, maybe we'll have an Australian referee set up the golf course. But then the Australians are rooting for Europe anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Padre, let's talk about Team Europe, though. I mean, it seems like this lineup has gotten better and better as as kind of the weeks had gone on. It felt like for a long time that this Team Europe was going to be lacking depth. But as this team kind of got closer and closer getting picked, it was kind of obvious who was going to be on this team. Do you think Luke Donald got it right? Yeah, I, I think the, 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 the team, there was no surprise in the actual picking right at the end. Uh, Adrian Moronk is a really good player was very unlucky to lose out, but he was in that seat. He was in the 12th man spot. And 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 Nikolai Hogard, he played great golf. He did the exciting stuff. And that always happens. The guy sitting in the hot seat, you know, it's easy. The, the, Nicholas did the show at the end. He played well at the end. And, and unfortunately, as good as Adrian played all year, if you switched how he did it, if Adrian played well at the end, and, and you know, he would have been in. Uh, so it's tough, tough on Adrian, but it, it happens every time. What I find interesting about the teams is, you know, two years ago after the loss of Whistling Straits, the world of golf basically said there's no point in Europe turning up again. You know, it would be 20, 30 years before Europe has a team capable of competing with this great American team. And here we are two years later and we're going, well, we've, we've you know, it's 50-50. Europe is very strong. And, we're, and in some way, we're back to the 80s where our best players are certainly holding the the glamour of the game. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. you know, obviously uh you've got the world number one in, in Scotty, but you know, Rory is the world number one in the terms of the hearts and minds of people. You know, if I know you know, right. and, and our players, John Ram is a world top class player. You know, the, the, we have Victor Hovland, the form we have players that not are just at the top of their game, they also probably hold a little bit of the hearts and minds of the world of golf. So we're, we're, we're kind of back to our, our, our best in Europe from, from the eighties. There's a lot of excitement at the top and that's not to say the U S is obviously very strong. They have lost a little because of live. There's no doubt we didn't lose like the U S have lost, you know, not having DJ DJ won five matches in a stroll and with this whistling straights. And I, I mentioned that earlier. It takes a huge mindset individual who can play the first four matches and win their singles. I, I would get too excited. 
You know, I'd be, I'd be too intense, but that's my nature. I, I'd be built up for each match that would take a little from the next match. And like for Dustin to be able to stroll through that, you're looking for characters like that in your team that are relaxed around everybody that just take it within their stride. So the US has lost a little bit. You know, you, we don't know with, with Dustin, we do, but with maybe with uh, DeChambeau, we're not really sure. But like when he was playing, he was a, some some player in 2021. Uh, Patrick Reed is obviously a, a, a you know the guy when it comes to the Ryder Cup Europe. I hate to say JT is trying to take the Patrick Reed uh, position as far as Europe is concerned. You know, I, I think he, he's a bit of the Ian Poulter that everybody going up against JT will want to beat him. And you you always know when you're sitting playing poker, the guy who's most successful at poker is the guy that everybody wants to beat. Because they'll make bad decisions against him, you know they won't make logical good decisions. So JT, if he performs, your lot could swing on JT at this Ryder Cup. If he performs, it's going to be tough for the Europe to take. They want to beat him, and they they want to see him as the weak link. So if he turns up and performs, that that, that he could win the Ryder Cup. He could be the pivotal man when it comes to this Ryder Cup. Uh, either way, he could be the one that 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 causes the US to lose or he could be the one that causes the US to win. Are you saying, mate, that literally when you're looking at the teams now, one person could swing this whole Ryder Cup like that? Uh, I'm not say- I'm not saying it for sure, but I'm definitely thinking that everybody's looking at JT. Everybody is, you know, and, and, and maybe, you know, going back over years, like we wanted to be Tiger so badly. Europe, uh, US want to be Polter so badly. And, you know, Polter's a perfect example. He mightn't have been the best player in the team, but the US just wanted to beat him so badly that sometimes, you know, he got the better of them. Uh, you know, it, it, the, again, going back to that poker analogy, the guy that winds you up at the poker table is always the guy that you, you can't let him bluff you and you see him the wrong time. You, you make bad decisions against players like that. And I think JT Ryder Cup wise, you know, has your, he, he, he has Europe's number. It really does. He, I, I've got to say, he's a great pick in that sense. He is the guy that Europe is looking at. He could, it, it could backfire in them, but he is the guy that Europe would have picked over the years because we'd know, hang on a second, this guy gets on the other team's nerves in the Ryder Cup. There's no doubt JT has us wound up in the Ryder Cup. We want to see him beaten. That's Europe's. We, 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 he's got a target on the back for Europe. Mate, that is really interesting talking about JT, which I'm sure we'll chat more about Smiley going on for the US team. Oh, yeah. What I wanted to ask, mate, is the mornings of the first morning of the Ryder Cup, especially as a captain, are you watching players if they're the same or if they're more nervous than usual? What are the mornings like and how's that first tee? I, I, I think you're watching it, but you're not, you know, you, you can't take anything from how they are before they play. You are very much watching how they react on the golf course. No doubt about it. Uh, We have seen in years gone by where partnerships have got changed on the Wednesday because players have been stressed out and, you know, just, you know, getting on somebody's nerves or just, you know, they're just too excited. But the reality is everybody's going to play the first day. It's a must. You must play all 12 players the first day and you are trying to establish who likes it especially from those rookies who is there to play who is who is with it who wants it who who's excited by it so you you're you're watching for sure and and that can be difficult not so much the first day because as i said you kind of have to set your whole day out the first day because you want to play all 12 but remember you're picking your afternoon partnerships halfway to two thirds the way through your morning so we have seen where players are doing okay and get picked for the afternoon and vice versa, where players are doing badly but end up winning the match, and all of a sudden they're not playing in the afternoon. And people are home saying, Oh, why aren't you playing him? And you go, Well, I picked that, you know, an hour ago, and he hadn't hit his hat up to that. Okay, he's come strong. And and then you you but again, this is the first day you want to get a good start, but you're happy if you were even after the first day and you have you've got all 12 players out there, you've got a good idea how they're playing you're going to be very comfortable. You're even comfortable if you're even after two days and you've got everybody in a comfortable position going into the singles and you haven't overextended yourself. 
So, you know, I know you want to get in the lead, but as we saw back in Brooklyn in 99, if you to get the lead of a couple of points, if you sacrifice your singles on the Sunday, it just doesn't work. You have to have a strong, fresh team coming into the singles on Sunday. You have to. You can't have your team burned out for Sunday yet. You know, you, you clearly you, you've got to be in the match too. You can't be going into that singles with a, you know, a four-point deficit, three-point is a lot to make up. I know it's been done, but it's a lot to make up. 